Just a little drive time recording. I hope you all enjoy it. Here we go. Good evening, friends. This is Arashineko. Greetings. Just a short one. Uh, a, a little bit about how the law works. I am not a legal expert. I believe there are uh, you, uh, tea cappers out there who are actually law experts or are in fact attorneys. And I'm not trying to pretend I am one. A uh, little song used to go, I know what I know if you know what I mean, and that's the way it says about how the law works, at least as, as it pertains to criminal law. What ends up happening is judges are, for the most part, defense attorneys who were able to come up with enough money and run for that office. They campaign, they put out flyers, they have the money to move and influence and you become a judge. As a judge, you have a lot of power. You have a lot of influence, far more than just the uh, you have in the confines of the courtroom. The only attorneys who would have that type of money would be defense attorneys or private practice attorneys. You do have attorneys that work for the state or the city, and that's called district attorneys. There is a DA, and he is the head guy. That's a very powerful political office, but underneath the district attorney are assistant DAs. And those are your prosecuting attorneys. But the prosecuting attorneys, that would be newer, usually those are newer attorneys. Those are lawyers who just got uh, past the bar exam and are new lawyers. And you work for a city or you work for the state. You have a very limited income. It's like having a city job or a state job. It's certainly not McDonald's. It's not homeless. But you just, you just don't make that much money. Whereas a defense attorney makes far more money, has far more funds available for, to campaign and become a judge. Certainly you need experience too. Uh, so what happens is when the predators say, let's just say Kevin Westerbeck, he gets arrested, right? He goes before a judge. Well, as has happened with other offenders, other predators, the judge may not like how a sting operates. The judge may not like the fact that in that sting you had a organization like Perverted Justice. The judge may not like the fact that NBC was involved. And the judge probably has a history of defending people who are accused of all sorts of crimes. So he's going to be very, as a judge, he or she is going to be, at the end of the day, pro-defense, not pro-law enforcement. A judge is going to typically tend to be pro-defense. About the best you're going to get out of a judge is he or she is going to be as neutral as possible. So if the judge doesn't like the way the whole sting operation with the private organization of perverted justice and the um, NBC being involved and the person being on TV, if the judge doesn't like that, they're going to throw the case out, if they're able to, and off, most often they can. So the judge is going to throw the case out. The judge doesn't really care that the criminal or the perpetrator or the predator tried to harm children. The judge only cares about if the case is, is being done or the case or the sting or the investigation was done according to law. Now the problem there is the law is open to interpretation as religion is. Anybody who disagrees with me can mention that in the comments and we can go round and round. But the law, as uh, state to state, city to city, the law is as convoluted and as open to interpretation as any major world religion. 
and you have people that argue on the defense side, which means every investigation has to be 100% perfect, or you have to let the person go free. Or the person can be prosecutions on the prosecution side, which is, at the end of the day, was the person trying to commit murder? At the end of the day, was the person trying to commit an armed robbery? Or at the end of the day, was the person trying to molest a child? And as I said, judges would tend to be either more on the defense side or at best neutral. So, yes, it seems to us that the, the child molesters, that the pred child predators are guilty. And they are absolutely guilty. You, you, they've got the chat logs. And the thing that has always cinched it, they may have committed a crime, by creating the chat logs, they may have committed crimes by transmitting pornographic material to children. But what cinches it is, they did all of that and they showed up expecting to have sex with someone who's underage. However, as I said, any of the cases could have been thrown out by the judge. Many of them were. And uh, I have a serious problem with that, but it doesn't matter what problems I have or don't have, the, that is how the system works, that is how the law works. What really disappointed me was, was that TCAP, To Catch a Predator, the show, their association with perverted justice, their, and the association with law enforcement ended. I believe it ended because of Murphy, Texas, but it shouldn't have ended at all. It should have continued. You win some, you lose some, there was no reason to stop uh, the decoy out operation. There was no reason to stop prosecuting pe uh, people who show up to commit a horrific crime like that. But that's just how the system works. All you can do is keep trying. Now, NBC didn't keep trying. Uh, something happened to perverted justice. I'm not quite sure about that. I, I, as, the more I get into it, uh, the more I look into things. But whatever happened there, there was a, recently a whole bunch of problems with Chris Hansen himself. But some people are still doing this. Some police departments are still doing stings. My hat's off to the people who are doing that. They are the soldiers on the front line protecting our children. God bless them. God love them. I certainly do. And that's all I have for today. This is Arashineko. Good evening. Signing out.